Okay, God bless you everybody. I'm outside of the courthouse here in the Netherlands and I was looking for the cheapest place to stay on Airbnb and this was actually it to have a private room. So it just brought back a lot, a lot of memories because I've been here over two weeks now. And I went to the Supreme Court in the other city two weeks ago yesterday on May 14th. So I've actually been to court three times for my case and I've already done my probation two years. But for those of you that do not know about what happened to me, I'm gonna share it now. Um, I, oh my gosh, you're totally scary. <laughs> God bless you Dutch people are total giants. Okay, so um, August 2016, I was on my way to Amsterdam and there was a couple of guys watching my YouTube and because I have a YouTube channel, people recognize me and they know me and many times they invite me to stay in their city and preach with them. And I said on one condition, I will preach with you and I will stay and that is if we sit down and I get to know you a little bit before we actually start preaching together because the Bible says know those that you labor among. That means you need to know a little bit about their theology, a little bit about their character before you start working with them because evangelism is work. And that day they totally went against my uh, request and they started preaching anyway. And it was like, well, I'm just here for a few hours and and then I'm going to go to Amsterdam. I have a hotel waiting on me, a very nice one, matter of fact. And so I broke my own rule, okay, and it cost me big time. Um, I did not know they were troublemakers, and my attorney even told me later, if you had not have been with these guys, you probably would not have been arrested that day. But that day we were preaching and I've removed all my videos off the internet from that day and that city. And, um, cause I just want to put it behind me. And um, I was uh, followed by a police officer and he said, I heard what you said about Muslims. And, I, and so he set me up. And so I just said, what you don't think? And I made three comments. I never yelled those comments, but because the police officer wanted me off the streets and to stop making a ruckus, I guess you could say, um, they arrested me. They put me in the cop car. They never had evidence. Um, they never had anybody offended come forth and testify against me. They went solely on, uh, even with me having an attorney, they went solely on the one police officer's confession. And so I came here, um, my pastor told me, yeah, go ahead and go back. So I spent all kinds of money to get myself back to the Netherlands for my court case in December 2016. The courtroom was full of teenagers. So it was awesome walking in and being, um, being able to tell my story and share what happened to me with a courtroom full of the next generation. Because Christianity uh, has a price to it. Following Jesus, you will uh, be lied about. You will be thrown out of the synagogues. Jesus even says when you are arrested, don't worry about what you're going to say. When you go before uh, kings, don't worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. So I've learned a lot about those kinds of scriptures since I answered the call of God in the ministry 20 years ago. I had no idea that I would go to so many police stations and spend so much time at a desk of a police officer, the head police officer in many countries, and share the gospel. And so I was found guilty of a hate crime in uh, 2016 and 
and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas, right? So then I went to, uh, what country? I went to Croatia for Christmas after that. So what they said was, um, first of all, the judge was inside of here. The judge was very nice and she wanted to thank me for coming all the way back here for uh, my case. And then, um, because the, the two that were arrested also, they never showed up for the, their court cases. But yet I've been to all three of mine. And uh, I don't even live here, I'm an American. And I'm a woman. So they did put it in the news and um, uh, they wrote an article about me in the Netherlands and that's part of the reason I removed all the videos is because they took all my videos and made a blog about it so then everybody was watching and things like that but um, uh, I wasn't planning on coming to my second court case I was in Israel and I remember getting the, the email, uh, I was in San Marino, in the clouds, it was a really cool day, I got an email in September 2017 uh, to that my appeal, um, and I said, well, I don't want to come, and so uh, my attorney suggested I come, so I came, and I had to fly from Israel to here, and so, again, I had to Put out a lot of money for hotels, for taxis, for trains, uh, for housing, airplane tickets to be here. And once again, um, we we didn't win yet. So last uh, two weeks ago, I, the Supreme Court has now moved my second appeal to um, June 25th. And they said they're not going to give the verdict that day. June 25th, they're going to tell what day they're going to move it to give the verdict. So I don't know, and honestly, I don't care because I went two years on probation, and um, so I served my time. So what I wanted to do when I got off of probation is I wanted to go to Eindhoven and I did. I was in Eindhoven for Christmas and I wanted closure and I still don't have the closure I'm looking for. But I went to Eindhoven and um, I, on December 22nd, I sang over the city for, for three hours. And uh, it was great. It was a, it was a great, memory of the last day but imagine imagine God calling you to a country that locked you up and God telling you I want you to go live in Amsterdam with a Muslim <laughs> while you're on probation for a hate crime and so I, that's what I did last year if you haven't heard that part of the story um, I lived with a Muslim last year for three months while I'm on probation for a hate crime. She never knew who I was, you know. It's real easy to go by my first name and not tell people about, you know, uh, my preacher's name, right? So then last year I came back to the Netherlands and I remember my tent breaking on the day of gay pride. And I ended up in Amsterdam, and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to even spend the night that night. And the next thing I know, I'm in the middle of gay pride uh, with all my luggage. And somebody hands me the microphone to preach, and I said, there is no way I'm going to preach at the gay pride march on probation for a hate crime. Because if I get arrested today, I gotta give the Netherlands 350 euros. I don't even know where I'm going to live right now, but you know what? I did it, and I was not rearrested. Praise God! That whole two years I was on probation, I was not rearrested, so it's over. But I just don't have the final verdict. Um, I am a convicted criminal in the Netherlands. It's crazy, right? 
So I say to people, because they're like, oh, you can't take a picture in there. And I said, well, I'm actually a convicted criminal in this country. I said, do I look like a convicted criminal? Because I am. But you know what? When you think about the, the life of the apostles and uh, Jesus Christ, he was a convicted criminal. And Jesus, uh, he did not do any sins but yet he became sin for us to make us righteous before God with his holy, perfect, spotless blood on the cross. Jesus shed his blood to make us clean and new and holy before a righteous judge. So uh, man can make their laws and they can decide who a, who a hater is. But when you look at John chapter 3, um, I preached this uh, a few years ago before I was even arrested, who the real haters are. And I remember uh, talking from John chapter 3 about those that hate the light. And so uh, there's a scripture where Apostle Paul says, have I become your enemy for telling you the truth? Have I become your enemy for telling you the truth? So just a lesson today about um, you can be arrested, you can spend the night in jail, you can have court costs um, and things like that. Um, my attorney has been helping me for free, so I appreciate that. But here's the thing. Um, When God tells you to speak for Him, you have to count the cost. There is a cost. That's why He talked about count the cost before you even begin to build the building. When you answer the call of God, you're answering the call to I could lose my life for this. I could spend time in jail for this. I could get hurt for this. And I, one final story. November 2017, when I found out that I had lost my court case again. Actually, they told us later. But I, after I had spoken that day, my interpreter comes up to me and she hugs me. And she says, don't die for this because it was so powerful in both court cases where I got to give my final words and share my heart what it's like being me, what it's like being a preacher working for God. And uh, I don't know where I'm going to live tomorrow. I don't know where I'm going to live in June. I've stayed in 16 places this year. So, uh, there is a cost to following Jesus, but it's better than being bored. Amen. I love the adventure, and I love Jesus. God bless you from the courthouse of the Netherlands. This is my first time preaching the gospel in the open air since January. I asked everybody to pray for me today. I appreciate your prayers. I have a brother here okay, okay, okay. from the Philippines. From the Philippines, yes. My name is Emmanuel. Ma Emmanuel means God, God with us. <laughs> yes, amen. That's a sign from God. Yes. And he's got a Dallas, Texas shirt on, which I... I lived in Dallas, Texas, most of you know, and he's also got Amsterdam Holland colors on <laughs> with the number 38, so I, I think he's a prophetic sign from God, Emmanuel with us. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone! <laughs> I've come out here to preach the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus Christ is Lord over Italy, not his mother, not the Pope, and not Joseph or the dead saints. 
Jesus Christ Amen. is Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God declares that God loved us so much that he sent us a gift, a gift of the word made flesh, a gift wrapped in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger. Baby Jesus, he grew up. Jesus is not a baby anymore. Amen. Amen. In the Philippines, yeah. they call him baby Jesus. But Jesus is the lion and the yeah. lamb. Jesus Christ came into the world to demonstrate the love of God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You will never know greater love than the love of God through Jesus Christ. There are many idols. There are many gods in this world. Satan is the god of this world. And the word of God is clear. There is one mediator. My voice. <coughs> Hang on. There is one mediator between God and man. That man, not woman, not church, that man is Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus God Christ the King. God sent Jesus to condemn you. God sent Jesus to save you. Amen. Hallelujah. From the wrath of God. Jesus came to save you from hell fire. You know, I have a lot of people make jokes about hell. Like they're going to be friends with the devil. The devil hates you. Hell is real. And people that reject Jesus go there. God is not willing that any of you perish, but that you all, that you all come to repentance. Repent. Believe the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried. God raised him from the dead. Three days later, he was seen by over 500 people. What must I do to be saved? You must repent. Repent.
Okay, this is where I'm going to preach. It is crazy packed. And I preached here five years ago, two days after I got out of jail in Rome. And it was a really good night. Dean was with me. So, I remember I held my camera like this in Croatia. So, I'm like, I could do that again. Why not? Start this way and walk that way. Always good to film for protection. You never know what's going to happen. And there's a man I had a showdown with earlier, right over there, about who's got the best guy. Praise the Lord, everyone. I've come out here to preach the Word of God. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mary was a blessed woman. She is not to be prayed to and not uh, to be chanted to every day. Jesus' mother is not the co-redeemer. Everything that happened on the cross is about God's Son, Jesus. There is only one name given under heaven which you and I can be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. It is not Jesus Christ and the church, Jesus Christ and Mary. It is all glory and honor to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross to demonstrate the love of God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus was buried. God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah! God is not dead. Religion is dead. Religion is dead. Religion is hanging around the church, but not being the church. God is looking for those of you that will get born again and give your life to Jesus Christ. Anybody can take a picture of an expensive church, but do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are your sins forgiven? If you died today and stood before God, would you go to heaven or hell? fire Jesus said if you deny me before men I will I must deny you before the Father in heaven also if you confess God he will confess you whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus died on the cross. There's a cross over here, but I would say many of you don't understand the cross of Christ. You understand 
a church building that has lots of money. But do you understand what Jesus suffered? Do you understand the pain that Jesus went through on that cross to show you the love of God? But yet Catholics pray to Mary. Don't pray to Mary. Pray like Mary. Pray like Mary. Mary said, I need a Savior. I need a Lord. It's in the chapter of Luke. Mary was a vessel of honor, but she was a sinner. She had more children. Mary did not stay sinless. Mary did not stay a virgin. Mary is like you and I. We all need a blood atonement for our sins. We all need Jesus Christ to forgive our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. 24 years ago, I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. And I got on my knees and I cried out to, to God to deliver me. And the power of God is real. The power to save is real. The power to deliver, no matter what sin vexes your spirit tonight. Maybe some of you hate yourself. Maybe some of you want to die. Maybe some of you want a new start, a new life. Jesus promises to give you a new heart. Jesus promises to give you a new life. There is life in Christ. That's why the scriptures say he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the life. He's the life. He's a good God. Jesus is a good God. Turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus is only a prophet. No, he's more he's than a prophet. Only a prophet. He's, he's too a, good for us. He's a human being like me and you. He's too holy. Is very he's too holy. What is the proof? He's a God. He's too holy for Islam. No, yes, he's holy. Yes, no, I he's know. more holy than Islam. I love Islam him so more is than not you. holy. I love Jesus did not have sex with a nine-year-old girl. Prophet Muhammad did. Jesus is not a prophet of Islam. He is the son of the living God. He's the great I am. He is the word of God made flesh. I love him. Hi. Hi. Um, I can agree with some of your things, but I just don't think this is the approach. Well, I don't, uh, I didn't ask you, right? I mean, I think I didn't scaring ask you. people off. Well, people need to be scared. People need to be scared. This isn't the right kind of scared. Yeah, well, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord had multitudes. He wasn't, like, you know, just yelling random stuff. Well, read the Bible. I I do, every day. Every day. And you never saw a street preacher in the Bible. Yeah, but this just isn't the approach. That's how they did it. Do you know Jesus was killed? Do you know the disciples I just were don't killed? Think it's appropriate to well, the Bible says go into all the world. For other Jesus doesn't respect other religions. I yes, can challenge you if you answer my seven questions. Okay. No, thank you. Answer seven questions and I No, I, I don't so turn to the moon God. So it's better to, to, to shut up. The Bible is converted by the church. So. Not the Catholic no, church. The Catholic church changed the Ten Commandments. Excuse me. Why your people... Take, they give Catholics money, change money the Ten Commandments. Don't, don't, that's not my people. That's this not my sense. people. Uh, I'm not a Catholic. The, ca the Catholic Church arrested me. The Catholic Church arrested me and put me in jail. I'm not a part of this church. 